I ask that you will please turn with me to Psalm 73. Stay down there. 
we got to prepare before we go. We got to make sure everything is all right. And then Reverend Grace came along and told us every to, told everyone to get out of the ark. She talked about Noah building the ark for his family and two of a kind of all them. What was going on in there were all kinds of mess. They didn't have time to store up in the treasury because they were too glad to get out. Matthew 6, 21. It tells me that if you're down there in the ark and you're keeping up all kinds of hell and you're not doing what the Lord wants you to do, you ain't going to be able to stay there. If you do stay there, that means something is wrong and your life is not going to stay the same. And now, after getting out of the ark, it is time to be called to explore by Reverend Simone. He said that in order to explore, you have to be mobile. You can't explore anything by being stationary. In order to be a disciple, you have to go. Like Jesus said in the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 18, being mobile is a true way of spreading the word. God's word. By, tech, by being disciples, there's a more, there's more you've been called to do. You have to get out and do what the Lord says. You can't just stay in your one spot and expect people to be around you and know that God is still here. You can't be standing still and go through all of your trials and tribulations knowing that God is able and that Jesus he still lives and not only does he live but he's blessing you and forgiving you for all the things that you've done and all the things you're thinking about doing so just remember remember that God is able now we come to today's text after the ox experience an experience I found is something personal encounter, undergone or living through. After thinking about it, I came to the conclusion that in order to have an experience, you have to go through something. You got to go through it. It's not an ex experience is not something that you can think about. The experience is not something that you can hear about. You can't go through an experience by listening to my testimony. You've got to have your own. And in order to have your own, that means you got to go through it. And once you go through it, then you can stand up and say, I have a testimony. <clears throat> now, there are many things after the Oxford Spirit in the Bible that we can talk about. And just to name a couple, that was Saul. Uh -huh. The original name was Paul. Yeah. He was a persecutor of the church. Yes, he was. Yeah. And after meeting Jesus, the yeah. Damascus Road, yeah. became an apostle of Christ and a missionary of the early church. Yeah. You can find that in Acts 8 and 9. And then we have the Samaritan woman yes. that met Jesus at the well, yes. who was an immoral woman. Yes. She had been married five times yes. and was present and living with a man that was not a husband. Yes. And come from John 4, 1 through 26. So profound was her encounter with Jesus that her simple testimony ultimately led her entire community to faith in Christ. She had a testimony. She could tell it. And she was able to express it enough so that others came and they wanted to see the man that knew all, all about her, her past. And, and, and that she had been forgiven. God will forgive you of everything. All you gotta do is ask. Repent. As they say. You know, I, this morning, Sunday school, that's what it was all about. Yes. Repenting. Yes. And once you do that, you're all right. Yes. We now come to our text. First Baptist Women Church, after the Ark experience. 
trying to think of the trials and tribulations you may have gone through. I kept coming up empty. Being a part of you for almost a year doesn't give me much experience as to your trials and your tribulations. Trying to put myself into your position, I can't see no fault. Philippians 2, 13, 16. Just because I can't see your after experience, maybe you can identify mine. Figuratively speaking, we have a special experience that brought us to Christ, changing from that old body into a Christ-like new beginning. Amen. Do you remember the first day you gave your life to God for the last time? Well, <laughs> and the reason I say the last time because through my experience, I don't know about you. I go in, I join the church, and then I was like that prodigal son. I had to go out there and the ride just living. And then uh, I came back to church. And then you be there for a little while and you're back out there again. And then one day something happened. I, I started praying. I asked the Lord, you know, I, I, it was almost like I always hear my mother say, you're walking the fence. You got one foot all over this side and one on that side. And then I was started praying. You got to be careful what you pray about. I started praying and asking the Lord to bring me out of the streets. And to put me more into his word. And then one day I was walking in town. I, I don't know if anybody know about the uh, Roxbury, Massachusetts. I was walking the street going to choir rehearsal. And on my way to choir rehearsal, I, I, I did one thing. I, I used the party on Friday night. So on Saturday, I had an opportunity to clear my body. So when I go in the church on Sunday, I was all right. And nobody could tell that I was out there partying all night Friday. But this one Saturday evening, after my prayer, I walked down the street. The street was halfway empty, and I'm walking, and, and I felt sick. And, and right there in the middle of town, y'all, I, I, the Lord, he purged my body. I, I was standing there on the corner, and, you could, and, and this is why I have the love for the drunkards on the street, for the homeless on the street, because at that time, if anybody had come and seen me, they would not have known that I was on my way to the house of prayer. They would have thought I was one of those drunkards out there on the street. I want to let you know that day was a cleansing of my body. That day was a cleansing of my soul. And after that day, if I did take a little slick, I would get sick to my stomach. And I want to let you know that even today, God has cleansed my body. God has been able to lift me up. God is the only one that I know that can keep you from doing wrong. I don't care what man say. I know my mother prayed for me. And I know that the prayer was working because of the fact that I was able and still able to walk without that curse. So I want to let you know, church, that you don't have to continue to do the things that you've been doing. And so, as I said, if you come back for the second time, for the third or the fourth, God will still welcome you into his house. I want to let you know that you don't have to be out there sinning, but you can be his disciple. You can let everybody know that he still lives and he still saves. Not that the journey is begun. You go to church every Sunday and you join every ministry that's in And as you're sitting there trying to join, there's something going to be missing. And I know in my 
case, like I said, you can identify with me. Just jump in where you wanna. I'm telling you, I can't tell you about your life experience, but I'm gonna tell you about mine. I'm gonna let you know that God is able. He's able to take care of everything. And I can tell you, I, I was standing there and I was working so hard on all the things in the church. I'm sitting there. I'm listening. I'm supposed to be listening to the preacher preach. But my mind is going on trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this auxiliary. How I'm going to prepare this auxiliary. Who am I going to get for this God? What am I going to do? And then, I don't know, but somewhere in the mind, God had to take me out of the situation. He took me over 3,000 miles, and I came to a place, and I didn't know nobody. But God, He knew where I needed to go. He knew who needed to teach me. He knew that He was going to get into my heart. And He knew He was going to change me from a Martha to a Mary. I tell you, my God is able. I tell you, I went to this church and nobody knew what I could do. Nobody. They didn't even know I could cook. And somebody, they wanted to cook for me. They wanted to do everything for me. And I just sat down to the preacher's feet and I received the word. And I was able to work in the word. I was able to identify what he was saying. I was able to know that my God, he is a good God and he will take you to everything that you need. And then you know one thing? I remember James 2.22. It says the doors of the word. Sorry. 222 says, the doers of the word and not hearers only deceive yourself. That was when I understood it, that you can't be a doer without the works. You can't have the works without being a doer. So I'm letting you know today, church, I came here because I was tired. I, 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 I had been working. Then I found myself out. I was doing the Mary Martha thing again. I was doing all the work and I wasn't listening to the word, Pastor. But I hear you every Sunday saying we need doers. We need doers and we need workers. And I still have a mood because you know something I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit to tell me. It's time now to go and do that work. Because sitting at his every Sunday morning. I enjoy that service. I enjoy that message. So you have to have that out of our experience in order to be able to sit there and continue to hear me pleading. I need workers. I need workers. I need workers. And you sit there. Can anybody identify? But then I listen to the council. My council. I'm waiting for him to direct me as to which way to go. Yeah. I'm waiting for him to direct me so that I can receive his glory. Yeah. So I want to let you know, church, you can receive all of his works. Yeah. You can receive the glory by working. Yeah. You don't have to be one or the other. You just have to learn how to put it together. Yeah. And I want to let you know that I've learned how to put it together. All right. It's just a matter of doing it. Yeah. It ain't easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. It's not, I'm going to, it ain't easy. That's right. It's ain't easy. Yeah. It ain't easy. So you, I want to let you know that regardless of what it is that you're doing, or what it is that you're striving to do, put God first. Yeah. And when you put him first, yeah. he will lead you. He will counsel over your 
your life. Yes, he will take you out of the harm. Yes. And I want to let you know one thing. Yes. Upon the ride back at home yes. from my trip to California, I found out that there was new things in my life. I found out that God has already renewed my body. Yes. And then now I tell you that the ark is really the walkway of life. You have to be able to identify when you're walking and when you're not walking. I want to let you know that he gave me new feet. Yes. That I can now walk on the heavenly yes. ground. I can no longer have to step back and wonder where I came from. I don't have to step back and wonder where I'm going. Because now you see my feet, they can shout glory. They can have a good time. I know what it's like to praise him. I tell you, if you don't know how to praise him, you go through some trials and tribulations. You go and you stand and you wonder what's going on. But I want to let you know my God, he's a good God. And then I tell you, he gave me a new hand. And I tell you, I no longer will push my sister down. Reach out and pull her up. be a bad person in the morning. You don't have to sit there and wonder what God is going to do for you. You know if you got the Holy Spirit, you can walk up and say, how you doing? Are you all right? Do you hear me? Can you identify? And then, after the hands, he gave me a new tongue. And in that tongue, I no longer criticize. In that tongue, I no longer give you bad words. In that tongue, I give you praise. I ask the Lord to forgive you because I know what it feels like to be hurt. I know what it feels like for that tongue to cut you like a two-way sword and tell you, do you know what I'm talking about? It will take you and it will love out you and not to be who you are. That tongue will tell you to do this and do that. But if you have the counsel to leave you, Tell them, say, it's all right, it's all right, you don't have to worry. And then, I got new eyes, I tell you, the things that I used to see, it ain't like that anymore. The things I see, if I see you sitting there, and you could be held. I was, but I, the only thing I see is my Jesus. I'm seeing you. I know, I know, I know He will forgive you of everything you've done. I know that whatever you're going through, He will know it. And I can see your pain. I can see your pain. Because I felt the pain. Yes. I know what pain is. Yes. I know what you're going through. Yes. I know how it hurts. Yes. But then, after you go with that, he gave me. He gave me. Yes. He gave me. Yes. He gave me. Yes. He gave me ears. Yes. I can hear everything. Yes. I hear everything. Yes. And I know what you said. It may not be what you said, but I hear it anyway. I tell you that God will use his discernment to keep you in I tell you you keep your eyes on the glory. He will direct your path. I tell you that regardless of what it is, I tell you what the doctors say, he will tell you anything. But I got a counsel, I got a counsel. My doctor, he will. My doctor, he will deliver of all things. He will take 
you. He gives you everything you need. I don't need your pills. I don't they tell me that I got a heart problem. But I tell you, but when I pray to my God, my heart is all right. I can see the peace. I can tell you there's nothing wrong with me. And if you take me now, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm the peace. I know he'll do it. I know he will. Because I'm here now. I'm here now. Are you here? First after women, are you here? Visit to women, are you here? If you can't forget our men, you too, God will provide. God will continue to you. God is on your side. And remember, keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on him. And he will direct your path.